Hey, thanks for stopping by. It's David with Farmitter Magazine. Today we're going to be reloading our 6mm Creedmoor ammunition using Burger Bullets, Lapua cases, and Vitivori powder. And we're going to be setting up our Redding T7 press with a, some other equipment, dies, and what's in the box. So, stick around. All right, we are ready to start on a video series, starting with just the simplest of components, setting up our press, and going through the reloading process. So, the first thing we have to do is, is I, wanted, I wanted to just briefly talk about the components we have, which were supplied by a lot of different companies here. So, the first, we have Lapua cases, uh, Vitivori N555 powder, and Burger, uh, 108 grain elite hunter ammunition. We're going to be using this in our custom six millimeter Creedmoor rifle. Um, we're, to do that, we're going to be reusing our Redding T7 turret press. Now, I myself have never used a turret press. I've generally only used single stage or progressive. So this is going to be a new experience for me, and I want to take you guys along the path and let you know what I found and how it performs. I'm expecting good things from Redding. Um, we're going to be reusing our uh, premium die set for six Creedmoor. And then when we're all done, we're going to be checking concentricity with a brand new slant, beige, slant bed concentricity gauge. So let's move this stuff over to the side for now. And let's get into the box. So we have some parts and pieces I know are going to be in here. So. I'm wondering if how many of you guys, oh, we got some instructions, I'm gonna take a look at those, are gonna know exactly what this is when I start pulling it out. And first thing I can tell you is it's packaged extremely well. This is a pretty heavy box, packing material. All right. Here is the manufacturing company that provided it to us, Inline Fabrication. So I have used their products for quite a while and I wanted to do a quick video of the setup. Now generally what I have used in the past has been the uh, strong mounts and I've gotten them for dedicated presses. This is a new experience for me as well, I have not used their quick change system, um, interchangeable top plates for different items. You can get it for pretty much any press out there. And you can also kind of get universal plates if you want to utilize uh, a base for let's say your trimmer or some other component, a small vise you could put on top of it for sure. Now, first thing when you start handling the, this is extremely thick. These are really heavy duty pieces. Uh, we got all of the hardware on top. And this must be, this would be the top plate going on to the strong mount. And this will be the quick change portion. I'm just going to do this real time and go through and get this guy set up. So, of course, to do that, anytime I'm working on anything out in the shop, the very first tool I grab, apparently, other than a knife, is going to be my fix it sticks. Again, I, I use these for everything. So, chances are I'm going to have already the right. Uh, bit in here for the uh, screws that come with this. So let's get to it.
Okay, I've got my pieces laid out, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach the lower shelf onto the two uh, um, ultramount side brackets. And what I found is the screws that are included are 332nd. So we're going to go ahead. I just kind of test set these through. Put those on and start all four of these. Okay, I've got these screws in place. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and put the top on and get this bolted up. Okay, now that I've got these four started, we're going to go ahead and tighten up the top plate to the ultramount itself. And to do that, I found the size is 532nd for the Allen holes inside the screws, and a half inch socket will fit the nuts that are provided. So we'll go ahead and get these tightened up. We got everything tightened up and this is absolutely rock solid and if you ever need anything for any of your presses any mounts you really need to call Dan over at inline fabrication and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave links down below for his page his website and he has his contact information right there he makes a great deal of absolutely outstanding equipment and I can highly recommend it. I'm looking around, um, I think I have on the order of five or six of his ultra mounts. So they are well worth it. Now, the way that this works is once you have this set up, you'll put it in place um, and you'll get different top plates for uh, different presses. And these will fit down in here for whatever press it is that you're looking for. Had some protective cups on the thread. Take those off. And it kind of fits in the channel. Comes down on top. You have two thumb screws. These come up underneath to tighten it up. All right. It's an extremely easy system. And then if you want to change out your press, if you have limited in workspace, pop this off, put the next one on. So that is the assembly. It's four bolts and nuts. Uh, four down here on the base and four up here on the top plate and you're completely assembled. Then you'll want to go ahead and anchor it down with either uh, lag bolts or bolts and screws, whatever you need to make sure that this is going to stay fixed where you need it. So with that, let's go ahead and we'll get our T7 out and we will mount our T7 up to our top plate and then we'll get this set up. All right, I told you guys I was setting this up real time and I was actually missing one of the screws from the bottom of the mount. Not a big deal, I have extra hardware. I would have grabbed one and put it in there. But one of the nice things also about the fix-it sticks is if you get one of the packages, they also have a magnetic base. So inadvertently, I had a couple screws that stuck to it and I didn't see it there. Flip over my fix-it sticks and there it is. So. Uh, if you're ever working on something and you lose some of your hardware, check check your fix-it sticks apparently. All right, I'm going to pop this one in real quick and then move on and we'll set up the reading press. Okay, we got that all set up now, squared away. Let's go ahead and we'll get into the press. So as I said, I have always personally used either single stage presses 
or Dillon progressive presses. I really haven't had any experience with anything else. Uh, let's, let's see what we get in the box here. Oh, we got a uh, bit of Ori reloading guide. That's kind of nice. Um, as you know, N555 is a fairly new powder that has recently come out, and that came out, I think it was released at SHOT Show 2020. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm just seeing if it's actually in in this book. Um, at the, I don't see it in here. I am just went to 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, looking into the 140, 139 grain bullets. I do not see it. Now, I do know that the burn rate is between... N550 and N160 and as of now this is a 19 guide so it's not in this guide however Vitivori has the reloading data I, I believe on their website and I'll also put a link to that down below all right uh, and here is the heart we have the press so the first thing I notice is the primer tube uh, for spent primers now in the past I have generally purchased aftermarket products to set up on let's say an RCBS rock chucker and put tubes in there if I was doing a lot of single stage also on the Dillons uh, there are some manufacturers out there some people who make really good aftermarket assemblies if you're as you're deep priming you'll just have a tube rather than the blue drop tray so that's really nice right off the bat all right we got packing material set that aside Here is her handle. Got a couple other things in here. Let's see how we can get these out. What do you have here? We have looks like a Hodgson IMR and Winchester uh, reloading manual. So that's really nice that they include these. I haven't I haven't received those any of those in the past. Set that aside. All right, what do we have here? Looks like we have the handle for the rotate the turret. And some hardware. And a Western Powders uh, hand loading guide. So again, thanks Redding. That was really nice of you guys to include those. All right. So, got one little thumb screw down in the bottom. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put our base plate onto the press so I can get a setup on the ultra mount and go from there. Now, the hardware that is included for the ultra mount to go to our T7 press, they are five 30 second screws, Allen heads, and half inch lock nuts to go on the bottom. So let's go ahead and we'll get these put on right now. When you're looking at this, the plate has recesses in it, and you're going to put the tapered screw head down in there so it will fit, sit flush when it's left on top of the ultra mount. So this is the upside and the other way. It's easy to tell. These screws are what lock it onto the plate. You'll put it in. These go down. So these will go up on this orientation on our press. Alright, now that I got these started, we'll go ahead and tighten these down, and then I'll show you something that is really pretty interesting underneath of it. It's really cool. Hold on. Let's get this switched out. We got our, I'm sorry, I said that was a 532nd, that was for the previous screw. This is actually a 3 head screw. So, tighten these guys up. All right, we have these four tightened up. Let me show you what I was talking about. Underneath the here, it actually says, and I'll take a picture of this and put it up here, hand fitted in the USA by JH, 923 of 20. So over at Reading, whoever JH is, 
thank you for taking the pride and fitting this together for us. And of course, this is made in the USA. All right. This thing is a beast. It is a heavy press. Um, you know, uh, a lot of presses, obviously, they're all made of steel. Um, but this thing is a tank. It's uh, sturdy. And put our other thumb screw on here. Okay, so we have that on. Last, we have our handle. Let's go ahead and get this just set in place. I'll torque this down a little bit later. Okay, so first thing, extremely smooth, you know, with this level of engineering and precision that goes into these presses, I really wouldn't expect much less. So, very nice. So on the turret itself, I believe that there must be a spring and detent in here that locks the turret into position. Uh, the handle that was included is for rotating the turret around. So why the turret press in general? The main thing that sets this apart from many other presses is you have the ability to put seven dies up in the top. Now that can really speed up your time reloading. So if you want to, let's say you're seating a bullet and you notice a, a, a split neck, you can easily just rotate over to your bullet puller, load it up, lock down your collet, pull that bullet out, and keep going along. So I can really see how this is going to be a huge advantage. Um, the other part that comes with it is you have another priming tool, one for small pr rifle primer, or one for small primers, one for large primers. And looking at this assembly, it seems like it's extremely well made. That's going to be easy to utilize. You'll put your shell holder in, put your case in, and pull it down and prime. Now, in the past, personally, I haven't used a lot of these primer tools. And I'm really curious about how many people out there utilize this style or do you use hand primers so if I'm gonna put a comment down below and ask a question and if you come across that question please comment because I really want to hear what you guys have to say um, not that they're bad it's just a different way of doing it so the press is gonna be outstanding we're gonna load up our six millimeter Creed more ammo we're gonna set up the dies in the next video series uh, so or in the next video and if you like what you see here on the page Please like and or subscribe so we can get you the content that you're looking for I hope if somebody else is out there looking for a press you do consider the Reading T7 So as of now this seems awesome Please head over to inline fabrication check out the complete line of things that they offer and as always head over to varmeter.com for a full selection of videos, articles, and hunt reviews. Thanks for stopping by.